This is Iron Maiden. This is the uh, four wall high ramp that I have built to solve the problem of uh, iron spawns of uh, Pelagornis Cliffs. Usually based out of uh, Viking Bay, it's a short sail for the, at least one Anki, but often I like to bring a pair of uh, Anki and Beaver to supply the wood and the metal needed to develop us shells on the Ragnarok map. Before we can sail her though, we need to build her. Now as courtesy I will go ahead and give you a single screenshot to look at to get the supplies gathered together. But uh, for uh, ease of reference we will need 18 stone foundations. You will need two large sloped hatch frames as well as two large reinforced trap doors. I also recommend those items be the S plus variety. Five large stone walls. Those are the ones that are four levels high. You will also then want 22 stone ceilings as well as at least one standard door frame or uh, and two double door frames or those can simply be three standard door frames. You will also want 11 stone walls, two stone window frames, one stone hatch frame, two stone gateways, as well as the two I recommend S plus gateways, two reinforced double doors, two sloped left walls, two sloped right walls, and then of course the equipment to install this. Two wooden foundations, a wooden pillar, and then to surround the territory for ease of access, you will want 12 wooden ramps. And then for internal cabin, we're going to want to add a wooden hatch frame, a wooden ceiling, a rope ladder, a campfire, and a mortar and pestle. And then you, of course, will want at least one or perhaps two beds to give yourself a movable respawn point. Go ahead and pause the video. Take a screenshot as you need. Let's move on. Take your foundations, and as you can see, I've already sank the first foundation in. We'll go ahead and start by setting up then a uh, two by two on the main raft itself. Then we'll go ahead and uh, stretch this out for, a, pardon me, two additional foundations forward using four in total. So you'll be starting by building essentially a two by four foundation from the rudder forward. The first six go down simply of course and then for the final two you will need to use uh, thatched ceilings to stretch it out for that last length. Once those uh, eight foundations are down, go ahead and grab some of your ramps, at least six of them. And then we are going to surround the front four foundations with a perimeter of ramps. This will allow ease of uh, running our Ankies up and down, getting out of the water, and then continuing its uh, march upwards vertically across the ramp we are about to build. Once you've uh, put your ramps on, go to the rear of the boat, grab your ceilings and grab your foundations, and use the same pattern of using the ceilings to extend your reach, and add the additional foundations to the back of the boat. In this format, we are also going to uh, get this, move it out a little bit so I actually can uh, add those foundations. We're going to add a, a setup of a two by four, so eight additional foundations, in which you make a T shape with the center lines meeting. While we're setting up guys, don't forget, I am happy to do your builds upon request. If there is something you would like to see me actually make on screen, 
leave a comment below. I'll be happy to do it for another episode. It wouldn't be arc if everything placed easily, now would it? You can try and stay dry all you want, like I'm trying to here. You're going to make me get in the water, aren't you? Yep, come on. But eventually, you're going to need to hop in to get some of these angles sometimes. And actually, I'm going to owe you an apology now that I'm here and looking at the pontoon. You need to move this one more back. Uh, the uh, T intersection of 2x8 goes back for there is an empty space between the pontoon and the uh, rear foundations. So we'll go ahead and get that fixed because this is also where you set up your ramp for the side and you need the distance on this because we're going to set up a eight foundation thick ramp that takes our Anki eight foundations or four foundations high so we've got to have that kind of distance in order to uh, get that up there we will be using the full length essentially that you can build on a raft in order to get our Anki up high. Just trying to add this last passenger ramp. Okay, this is how you, know, you and I can get on the boat mostly. Uh, critters are obviously taking the larger ramps, but once we get this, then we get uh, the ceilings and we add the final row of uh, four foundations. This will be the rear of the raft. Don't you just hate it when you blow a perfectly good hole in your boat? Let's fix that. Okay, once you've got that T-intersection set up, grab more ramps, and we are going to put two ramps on either of the sides. This will actually be a uh, avenue for you to uh, ramp up your uh, animals to store them within a 
you know, barn shed area that will be underneath the ramp you're about to build. This is actually really convenient uh, when uh, you're dealing with the airborne critters of the itchies and stuff flying around or you're just hauling them. Uh, there's enough room for a couple of critters in here. A good pair I usually use is uh, the Anki, of course, but also the uh, Beaver. You're also going to want to grab uh, five of the four high walls. I use the S Plus Extended Editions to cut down on uh, uh, foundation counts. You'll put four at the rear. Again, these are the large walls, four uh, normal walls high. And the fifth one you'll put off to the side. But you only put one off to the side because we need to modify the wall we put over on the other corner. Grab a door frame. I like the uh, double door frame. Uh, you can use a standard door frame if you'd like, but I like to put those over for the person gates. That way uh, it's nice and easy for you to run in and out. Once you've got the frames up, might as well get the doors and drop those in. Okay. Then uh, we need to start working on uh, getting the actual sloped hatch frames up. You're going to want to come up to the top, and this is one of the more tedious parts of this build. It drives me crazy. See what I mean? I wish I had a tip for fixing this. It's trial and error, and you're just going to have to be patient and work with it, but it will work. Okay. See what I mean? Uh, these are worth it, but I don't have a better tip for uh, how to place those. In fact, if you know how to place these with accuracy, your comment would be greatly appreciated and I would pin it. Getting back to the build. Next we are going to grab your windows. And uh, we will go ahead and then drop those both on top of uh, the doors that you just place. Next up, uh, start getting some ceilings, stone ceilings. Now these are going to require a little bit of a hop to get them up to height. They can be slightly frustrating, but it can be done. See? And we are going to go ahead and uh, drop ceilings across the edges, like so. And then on the other edge, Hop in place. Takes a little bit of practice. I make it look easy. It took me a lot of practice and uh, building this a couple of different times to get that down. But trust me, you can do it. Once you've got uh, the uh, walls with a couple of ceilings placed, go ahead and grab your stone gateways. Again, I'm using the standard uh, gateway, uh, the uh, S Plus Dino Gateway. And we're going to put those on the far edges uh, near your ramps. And if you've got those ramps placed first, they can be used to help uh, give you a distance marker. Just center that up. Be a little tricky, I'll fully acknowledge it. There we are. And then we do the same thing on the other end as well. Also get some walls here since I'm here. This is the wall that requires a um, different alignment. You're not just doing a four high wall because you do need that. You know, let's go ahead and get some of these slopes put in first as well. Pretty normal, just dropping the triangles in. Okay, I do like to use the uh, standard, not the S plus, on these slopes because I like the wood decal on it. And I also think it helps me uh, determine which is inside, which is outside. We're also going to drop in some pieces of wall just to basically fill in the triangle here that is underneath the ramp. And then we'll do the same on the uh, other side. Okay. Drop in the triangle, drop in the triangle, just kind of fill in the spaces there. All right. 
Let's go ahead and get the doors placed. These are pretty simple. Yep. Okay. Now, these you want to manual, because you're going to be walking on top of these things. You're going to be standing underneath of these things. You want to set these to manual. Just trust me on this, because you're going to go just like this. Grab another section of wall, drop it on top of the window like that, and a second stretch of wall. Drop it right there. A third piece of wall, we're going to repeat history on the other side. And get a fourth, like so. Hop off, grab a few more pieces of ceiling. Same situation, do a hop in a place. Just like that. And like that. Okay. Starting to take shape here. Up the ramp we go again. This time we are going to extend it. If I grab the right piece. Similar situation. These things place rough, but they're so useful they're worth it. Please. See what I mean? Uh, when you're demo gunning, be careful. Make sure that uh, there's not a piece of structure behind it. Slap it down. There we are. Okay. And we grab the uh, hatch frame as well. Drop that in. Careful when you come up here. Get close enough to make sure you can set it to manual. You are going to want to set this to manual because you're walking up here. And I think you can start to see how this ramp will take place now. See if that's how your uh, Ankies are going to be able to walk up this high, because you're going to be able to float this ramp wherever. Come on down to the bottom, uh, slip inside the ramp now, and let's finish off this corner. And this is the part we need to build piece by piece, because we need some access here. So get uh, two pieces of wall. Ugh. Okay. Two pieces of wall, drop it in like that. Pardon me, three. The fourth is where we need the variance, and what we need there is to grab a door. We're going to drop that up top on the fourth level. Okay. And then this is a good place as well to start getting some hatch frames. You're going to use a wood hatch frame to be at the floor level of that door. And this is a good time. Go ahead and grab a piece of ceiling as well to create that little area. That area is going to be where we put your important stuff like your smith, your bed, your fire, that sort of thing. Might as well get a uh, rope ladder now. And we want to have that on the interior edge of that hatch frame hole. You're going to have to play around with uh, where to stand to get that angle on it, but that is the best place to put it. You can do it. It is annoying. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and try and place that from up top. So again, we're going to go up the ramp again. And uh, from here is a better angle. Not okay, just come on, click. Come on. Click for me, click for me. Nope, not there. There we are. That's where we want it. Perfect. Excellent. While we're here, let's go ahead and get our respawn station kind of set up here. Uh, I do a little bit thinner here, so I'm just going to drop a bed in. I like to put that pretty much dead center. Because I don't put rails in, I like to have a little bit of room. So we're going to put that dead center. You cannot put it all the way back to the wall. You get too far away from foundation to be able to actually place it. But you can get it pretty far back. And then we're also going to drop in a mortar and pestle. When you're running Ankies enough, I like to add in a uh, mortar and pestle to help work up spark powder. 
And then we will also drop in fire in a second here too. Let me place this. See what I mean about range? You gotta play with it a little bit. And uh, no boat is complete without a campfire. I can find animals to kill anywhere, but I'd like to be able to cook up my supper while I'm working. And again, we're going to drop that about midway. Okay. And right here is going to be... Uh, let's get my uh, doorway placed first. And again, same situation. Center it up. Use your ramps as a little bit of a guideline. Try to get that as even as possible. That's why I like the ramps in first. They'll give you an idea of where your edge is, as well as trying to keep things even. There we are. Okay. And then we're also going to uh, grab the doors. Your dino gateway, again, S+. Plus. And we'll get the other door in there as well. Drop that in, drop that in. Really starting to take shape here. Okay. Close that. Run on up. Okay. On top of this is going to be a stone hatch frame. Okay. And get a piece of wall and we're going to try and plug that hole there come on there we are all right let's come on up to the top here and let's start b building the uh, elevated runway and this is what really gives you access to the elevated iron and with that, we're just going to use ceilings, and we are going to run those around the complete edge of the foundation. Nice trick about S, uh, about uh, arc building. You can actually go about two foundation, two ceilings away from a foundation. We are just going to go out about one. We are restricted a little bit from the build uh, limits of the raft itself, but since we put foundations around so much we can get a very uh, far out walkway for the Anki to uh, operate off of and we are now operating four levels higher off the surface than what we were. This is going to open up a lot more metal to us to be able to uh, really get a good haul off of Pelagornis Bay. It's not unusual for me to get several thousand metal on a single run. We've got one more hole we need to plug. Another piece of wall. Right there. All right, now let's start moving the final piece of equipment into here. Again, I like to use Smithies as storage because they are cheaper in vaults and especially with the uh, S Plus variants, you can hold a lot of material into it. So we're going to go ahead and demo gun the smithy. We'll hit the transfer gun for the uh, remaining cache with just a few leftover parts right now. And then uh, we will actually uh, drop that in that uh, loft area that we built. I need to turn these doors to manual. On a boat, you auto-close. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put these to auto-close. I do not generally use... Uh, automatic open doors on any kind of boat because you're in confined space you're going to be walking by these doors all the time it's either manual or auto close only auto open is just going to drive you crazy okay last one all right and with these uh, rope ladders you need to jump but uh, I like it uh, this way so I can easily run my Anki in and walk up. You just need to hop and hit E and you're good to go. Alright, so you grab your smithy and uh, you're gonna drop it right here in the doorway. Get that lined up real quick. Now you need to test this as well when you get it in there, but 
drop it in as close to the wall as you can kind of clip it in a little bit yeah take a look there okay now before you forget about it test this okay see I can't go down that hole so I need to push that in a little further okay alright so let's try this again you can do this so let's push that in clip it in a little bit more everything will function but we need to be able to access the hatch floor there we are that's perfect all right, let's show you how she sails. I've gone ahead and loaded the critters in here. And I know everyone's going to say, what, you can't see a darn thing. Well, if you just move your mouse down a little bit, you get a pretty good view. Now, you can also first person this and open the doors, and you get a decent view that way as well. 90% of the time, I just sail like this, because as you can tell, you're pretty much right at the same level where the uh, ceiling uh, walkway, it's pretty thin right there. So let's cut to the chase. You sail the boat where you need to. You get on your Anki. You actually walk up the ramp here. And then one thing I would keep in mind is when you're dismounting, you want to pay attention to where you're dismounting because you do take off that edge here. Then uh, once you've loaded up the Anki, this is why you have the hatch frames and the door frames. is because you can just transfer gun and shoot it through it. I'll give you another idea of how this all works these Ankies will actually be they only need like their fingertips on the edge here so you can very much walk off to the edge here walk off to the side and you think I'm not close enough here but if you just get anywhere in the vicinity with the hitbox here you can absolutely tell I am knocking that boulder asunder that's how close you kinda need to get here not that close it's the height that uh, has been the limiting factor if you can get anywhere within a good meter or so of it, you're going to be able to take out these uh, metal spawns. We'll do it again. Sail right on up, straight on in. And again, you'll see where we've uh, got the ramp. Go out the door, close the door, run on up, hop on it. Just walk on over. See? Front door delivery. This is pretty simple, pretty smooth operating. And you can tell I'm doing this just as one guy on single player. If you had one or two other guys, you know, someone riding the boat, maybe someone uh, running the transfer gun, keeping the Yankee empty, keep uh, forwarding the metal into it, no problem. You've got some structure spares available as well. You could very easily have someone processing excess uh, stone and flint and uh, turning that to spark powder and uh, running a f uh, an actual forge or two in the boat as well. I've done that kind of operation before. You've got the room in there. You can. There's a lot of things you can do here. And as you gain experience uh, working this rock, uh, you'll find that uh, you can get these Ankies to practically be like Spider-Man on the walls. I've had these Ankies up at like almost completely 90 degree nose to the sky vertical on the wall some places. But there's a lot of metal here. You're just willing to get to it. Give you another view here of uh, the entire ramp process from water standard ramp up to the front and right here is often where I uh, just ride with the Yankee take the ramp all the way up turn the corner and take her on out to the peak now around here you want to be careful on where you dismount just a little user tip I'll let you know here then you bring it on out to the edge around to the edge you're fine
And as the sun sets, there she sails, the great and mighty Iron Maiden. This is the boat that's kept me in metal ever since I've lived on Viking Bay. Any map I've lived on Viking Bay. She's worked well, she's sturdy, she's versatile. Single player, multiplayer, you can name it, she can handle it. Feel free to put this on your own map. Let me know how it works. Let me know of upgrades you've done to her. I won't be ashamed to find out I could do something more. Keep in touch with me. Leave a comment. If this helped you out, or heck, if it just made you smile, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, and keep an eye on the schedule. Minecraft Friday, Ark on Sundays, and Bonus Bill Wednesdays. I'm Commander Tom. I'll see you next mine. Thanks a lot.